I watched him as he was telling me that he wasn't going to be going to his family's Christmas lunch, dinner, whatever it's going to be. Uh, he had felt a lot of rejection from his family, and now he just he just couldn't be bothered with all the politics. He was going to go somewhere else. And I believe that he decided that a corner of a rooftop was preferable to a delicious Christmas lunch with people who had shunned him, who he felt had been disloyal to him. And uh, he decided to, he didn't want to be part of it anymore. Hi, I'm Barry. Turning the page here. This is a, a Christmas blog post. But this this particular man, um, I think what he was doing was like what a proverb uh, says, and it's a version of this proverb. It says it's better to live alone in the corner of an attic than with a quarrelsome wife in a lovely home. Now, this isn't a dig at woman. It's more about actually looking at options and saying, actually, it's probably better to be alone than than in a place where you've got plenty, but there's a lot of strife, a lot of tension, okay? (laughs) Or maybe it's a version of what St. Kenneth Rogers of Houston, Texas sang. You've got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. (laughs) It's a song the gambler. Christmas time. It's a time of sprinkling of uh, stardust over a simple story. You know, the Bible doesn't mention a thing about a donkey that Mary rode on, okay? No donkey. Uh, it doesn't describe any angels, um, any any animals, I should say, around the manger. Uh, there was no record of whether Jesus cried or not. I actually suspect he did cry. It was like a fully human cry and a fully divine cry, and it probably woke up some angels. Uh, we, we like to beautify and sanctify and kiss the Christmas story with fluff. But here's a question. Why was there no place in the inn for Mary? Okay. And, and Christ, Christian custom, and every sermon I think I've heard, would say that be, because there was a census being taken, um, that was happening, and so all these people came to Bethlehem, and it was crowded, and so there's no accommodation. But the text doesn't actually say this. It, it says this, In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Cornelius was governor of Syria. All went to their hometown, their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house of the family of David. Okay, so he had to go home to say, this is who I am, da 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 And he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and was expecting a child. (laughs) They're not married, they're engaged. Um, While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room, or no, I shouldn't have said room, Habit, eh? because there was no place for them in the inn. Luke uses the word place to describe a need Mary and Joseph had. I wonder, and it's pure conjecture here, if Joseph and Mary felt that there was no place in the inn for them, that um, kind of judgments had been made, whispered gossip, Non-verbal looks and glances, rejection, rudeness. They're not married. You know, they're not married. She's a young teenager. You know, I heard that he's not the father. I heard she said that God was the father. Oh, there was no place for them there. This wasn't a welcoming environment. Pure conjecture. And in the Proverbs context, we might put it in this way. 
It's better to have the baby in an animal feeding box than in a warm, dry inn with judgmental critics. We all need a place, a place we call home. Not just a house, but a place where everybody knows your name and welcomes you regardless. Um, in the last week, I saw a cartoon from a, a Canadian cartoonist called David Hayward. And uh, if you're looking, uh, if you're looking at this on YouTube or you're listening to the podcast, you'll have to come over to the blog and see the actual cartoon. But it's a picture of a, a simple church, and um, and there's a round hole for a door, and there's been some uh, planks nailed over the door to make it actually quite small and square. And out from the inside of the square. There's a, a square peg looking out, and it's got a face on it, and it says, sorry, you just don't fit in here anymore. And it's, he, the peg is looking out towards this round peg who's looking very sad. Sorry, you just don't fit in here anymore, into this church. And I think it describes uh, many of the experiences I've had and I've seen in others as you have become more round in your views and beliefs, then simply the old church style is just too square for you. You don't fit in. Um, they may not even say sorry. It may just be an outright rejection, a banishing and ex an excommunication. No communication with that person, not at all. It may be that the old inn is not the place for you to nurture that little infant faith of yours with all its non-square questions. It's not a square peg in a round hole. It's a round peg in a square hole, and the sides of the square wall are moving in to crush the roundness out of you, to assimilate you into its likeness. You see, I want a place where squares morph into rounds, and where rounds find a hole to fill, fill and flourish. Perhaps uh, this Christmas you are facing a sense of rejection, that there is uh, no place in an inn for you, uh, nowhere you would consider the safe. Possibly you consider the safest, most holy place as the corner of a rooftop or the barn out back. I wonder if this is the Christmas that you make a place for someone you know that has felt the cold winds of rejection. You never quite know who might turn up. It might even be the saviour of the world. <laughs> Here's some quotes for you to consider. And the Lord told him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me. As king. This was God talking about um, the rejection of God being the leader of the people of Israel. Uh, only those willing to stand close enough to listen will ever hear those closest to the problem. Jim Wallace. A refuge is anything that protects, nurtures, or uplifts you. Life can be hard, and everyone has difficult, uncomfortable experiences. We all need refuges. What are your own, Rick Hansen? Humans are neither separate from each other or from the world in which we exist. We are bound together within a larger whole, and we can never experience personal wholeness apart from embracing our place on that larger web of wholeness and belonging. David Benner. We live in the shelter of each other. Celtic saying. Questions. Have you ever felt the cold winds of rejection? How did you cope? Number two, what makes a safe place and accepting? What makes a place safe and accepting for you? What have we added to the Christmas story that isn't in the biblical text? Here's an exercise. Make a place for someone else. Someone who might have retreated to the corner of a rooftop. And I've got some other um, posts here that I've written over the I usually write a special Christmas post each year. 
and I've got three of them here and there's a link to some others but consider the places that may have rejected you make a place for someone else that might be in a corner of a roof okay bye